we want to look at the reactions of monosaccharides reactions of monosaccharides now one of the reactions of monosaccharides is oxidation is what oxidation now depending on the type of oxidizing agent we use monosaccharides can undergo three types of oxidation depending on the nature of the oxidizing agent to use now the first type of oxidation monosaccharides can undergo here is formation of adonic acid adonic acid now in adonic acid formation of adonic acid we are using a weak oxidizing agent a weak oxidizing agent like police reagents Felling reagent, Benedict reagent, bromine water or bromine solution. Now, if you have a monosaccharide, this is glucose, and in the presence of a weak oxidizing agent, only this aldehyde group here, only this aldehyde group will be oxidized. And you agree with me that if an aldehyde group is oxidized, you have what? Carboxylic acid, right? So. In the presence of weak oxidizing agents, only this anomeric carbon is oxidized. So the aldehyde functional group here is oxidized to a carboxylic acid. All other parts remain the same. Now, what is formed here is an adonic acid. Since we use glucose, this is what? Gluconic acid. So gluconic acid is an adonic acid. So the first type of oxidation is summation of adonic acid. And we said what form of oxidizing agent is used here? Is it strong or weak? Weak, right? And which one is oxidized? Only the RDI functional group here is oxidized. That's that. Now, the second form of oxidation that monosaccharides can undergo is formation of uronic acid. Formation of uronic acid. Now, it is important to note that this formation of uronic acid is very rare in the lab. For you to make uronic acid in a lab uh, is not very easy. But it happens in biological system where enzymes convert glucose to uronic acid. So this is an enzymatic reaction. Now, in the formation of uronic acid, that enzyme will leave this RDI functional group and go to this terminal OH and oxidize it. And remember, oxidation is supposed to be stepwise, right? Alcohol will be oxidized to what? RDI. Terminal, sorry, primary alcohol will be oxidized to RDI. Then RDI to what? Carboxylic acid. But in this enzymatic reaction of the formation of uronic acid, the enzyme will not oxidize this carbon this RDI functional group here which is the one that is supposed to even be oxidized more prone to oxidation it will not be oxidized it will run through and go to this last one here and oxidize it and as it is oxidizing it it is not oxidizing it to the RDI functional group but it's oxidizing it directly to what carboxylic acid so if you look at this structure everything here remains the same the only difference here is what this last one so it is oxidized from an alcohol directly towards carboxylic acid. And what do you call this now? Glucuronic acid. So in gluconic acid, it is the RDI functional group here that is oxidized. In glucuronic acid, it is the terminal hydroxy group that is oxidized. Do you get that? But don't forget, formation of gluconic acid, what type of oxidizing agent do we use? weak oxidizing agent right in formation of glucuronic acid what is used enzymes right biological enzymes are used here now the third type of oxidation that monosaccharides can undergo is formation of adaric acid and this formation of adaric acid is only possible in the presence of strong oxidizing agents if it is weak oxidizing agent, what are we going to have? If we use a weak oxidizing agent, what do we have? Adonic acid, right? If we use enzymes, what do we have? Glucuronic acid. Now, if we use a strong oxidizing agent, what do we have? 
are direct acid. And this strong oxidizing agent like nitric acid and heat, nitric acid and heat, what it will do is it will oxidize both this RDI functional group and this terminal OH group. So strong oxidizing agents like this will oxidize this RDI group to a carboxylic acid and it will not stop there. It will also oxidize this terminal OH group to what? Carboxylic acid. Do we see what is happening here? The difference here is here it is only this one that was oxidized. Here it is the last one that was oxidized. But when you use a strong one, both of them will be oxidized. And you call that what? Glucaric acid. Glucaric acid. So these are the three forms of oxidation that monosaccharides can undergo depending on the type of oxidizing agents used. Do we understand? We are still looking at the reactions of monosaccharides. And the second reaction of monosaccharide here is formation of osazone. The first was what? Oxidation, right? And we saw the three forms of oxidation that is possible. Now, formation of osazone. Now, all reducing sugars can form osazones, meaning all monosaccharides can form osazones. Now, what are osazones? Now, look at this. If a monosaccharide like glucose reacts with phenylhydrazine, please look up. Phenylhydrazine, you agree with me that when you use benzene as a substituent, you call it what? Phenyl, right? Phenyl. So, phenylhydrazine, this structure is like this. If I draw benzene, then I attach hydrazine, NH, NH2. So, this stuff here is the same thing as this stuff here. This is the benzene. This is the phenyl. This is it. And this is the hydrazine. So, if glucose or monosaccharides react with phenylhydrazine, osazone will be formed. They will form phenylosazone. Now, the most interesting part of this is if you are using glucose, you form the same thing. If you are using mannose, you still form the same thing. If you use glucose, you form the same thing. If you form, use mannose, you form the same thing. Remember, glucose and mannose are they epimers? Are they epimers? Are they epimers? Yes, they are epimers. They differ in one position. Position two, right? So glucose and mannose, they are epimers and they differ in position two. Glucose and galactose, are they epimers? Glucose and, and galactose, they are epimers, right? They differ in position what? Position what? One, two, three, four. They differ in position four if you draw the structure of galactose. Now, if you look at this, glucose here, if it reacts with phenylhydrazine, what will happen is, if it reacts with excess phenylhydrazine, this phenylhydrazine will attach to this carbon 1 and carbon 2. So if you look at this, I just attach this whole stuff here, I attach it here. But you know if you are attaching this to this, we have to remove one hydrogen, right? That was why we had this. Now, this same phenylhydrazine will be attached to the second carbon because we are reacting with, with excess of phenylhydrazine. Now, the structure formed, all that parts remain the same. The structure formed is called phenylosazone. If you use mannose, which is an epimer, a two-position epimer of glucose, you still form, if you react mannose with this phenylhydrazine, you still form osazone. So, monosaccharides can undergo formation of osazone when they react with what? When they react with what? Excess what? Phenylhydrazine. This is the phenylhydrazine. So, we've seen oxidation and we've seen formation of osazone. Now, let's look at the third reaction of monosaccharide, which is reduction. The first reaction we've seen oxidation. The second reaction we've seen formation of what? Osazone. And now reduction. Now if you look at this compound, this one here on the board is what? This is what? This is Manos, right? This is Manos. Now if Manos reacts with a reducing agent, 
if manos react to the reducing agents, what we are going to have here, you observe with me that this place, this RDI functional group will be reduced to an alcohol, right? So we'll have a poly or two out. So if this reacts with a reducing agent like sodium hyperborohydrate, we'll be having so instead of RDI functional group, yeah, we'll be having what? An alcohol, right? So we'll be having an alcohol. So what we have here is an alcohol. And this alcohol is called aditol. Aditol. But since this one is coming from manus, what will you call this aditol? What do you call it? Mani. Are you afraid of the name? Manitol, right? This is manitol. Now, if it was coming from glucose, let's look at glucose. The structure of glucose, let's draw it together. The first carbon is an RDI functional group, right? Then you complete the number of carbons. One, three, two, three. Four, five, six. Then H2O. Then we say carbon three is on the left, right? The OH is on the left. Other ones on your right. Now, at this point, if glucose undergoes a reduction, yeah, will also be reduced, right? I will be having our aditol. But now look at this. If this is glucose, the aditol we are going to get from glucose will be what? Eh? Glucy. Glucitol. But if you don't want to call it glucitol, the common name people know for glucitol is what? Sorbitol. It's sorbitol. So anytime you hear sorbitol, just know what they are talking about is glucitol. Glucitol is sorbitol. Or the tall. Alright, so now if galactose undergoes reduction, that aditol form will be what? Eh? Galaxitol, just like that. Just like we have manitol, sorbitol, galaxitol, just like that. So we've seen three reactions of monosaccharides. The first one was oxidation. And we said if the monosaccharide reacts with a weak oxidizing agent, like toline's reagent, perlin's reagent, benedict's reagent, only the adiate functional group at the top there will be oxidized. And the resultant compound will be what? Will be what? Adonic acid, right? So if it is glucose, what we'll be having is what? Gluconic acid. If we are using enzymatic method, we discover that it is only the last hydroxy group that will be oxidized. And we'll be having what? Uronic acid, which is what? Glucuronic acid. You see how I look you. Don't shake my mind. So glucuronic acid now the if we are using a very strong reducing agent we are using a very strong oxidizing agent sorry we we'll discover that both the first and the last carbon will be oxidized right forming what adaric acid so if it is glucose all we have in is what glucaric acid now we went on to formation of osazone and we said when monosaccharides react with phenylhydrazine they form phenyl Osazone. We went on to the third one now, reduction, and we said this RDI functional group can be reduced to an to an alcohol. So we'll be having a polyol, polyol called aditol. Now the aditols are the ones we are seeing here. So basically, these are the basic reactions of monosaccharides. So draw this, and we move on to the next thing.